All right, guys, welcome to episode one. Today we're going to be talking about sliders. So sliders is something that we use pretty extensively in both the animations of our project and also just moving things into place. So the first thing about a slider is how it's called in. Let's say you wanted to draw point one one. Simply putting a variable like a or b or a1 or a2 will allow you to add a slider. Click add a slider, or just press enter, and then you have a slider. So what the slider does is it allows you to change the value of this variable. So by default, a is one and you can use the slider to change it. Um, the step of a slider, just uh, it controls how much it moves up or down by when you press play. So this means it increments in 0.5. You can change it to step, for instance, two, and it goes up by two. And then you can change it to be more specific. So you can use step 0 0.01 and bam, smoother and more specific. The other thing about a slider you can change is the domain and range, or just the restriction on it. So if you want to say make it only between 0 and 5, A will now have a domain of 0 and 5. Uh, other things about sliders is that, as you can see, it bounces back and forth. That could be changed right here. So it only moves in one direction. And you can also change the speed, make it faster or slower. So when it comes to applications of a slider, Obviously, you can use it to move around a point, set it to press play, and it'll just start moving on its own. So, second thing you can do is if you take a function, like for instance, a sine wave, and you want to say, move it up and down on the y-axis, you can make that um, vertical translation a function of a slider. So it moves up along with the slider, or it can move up and down with the movement of a slider. Um, the se second thing you can do is you can use two sliders. For instance, if you have um, x minus b. So all of a sudden, b controls your x coordinate and a controls your y. So you can use two different sliders to control a function. And you can use this to move it around. If you create a point, for instance, since b is the x coordinate and a is the y coordinate, if you can make it movable, then moving the point will change the two values of the sliders. And as it does that, you can also use it to move around a function. So we use this pretty extensively in ours. We would just make a function, like for instance, one of the ornaments, we'd make it in terms of a slider, for instance, A, B, or B, A, or A1, B1. And then once we have the ornament made around the slider, we would just take the slider and we would um, make it related to a point and then move the point to whatever place we wanted. So you can do this for circles, which we used a lot too. So x minus b, y minus a. And so you can start moving multiple functions. The other thing you can do is you can use these variables in the restriction. So let's say you only want this to be, let's say between it's b minus 4, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to b plus 4. So this means that it'll only be within uh, 4, give or take, left or right, of the dot. So you can put these variables in the restriction, and now you can start uh, moving your entire function along with the restrictions with the dot. So yeah, that's the basics of sliders. And the other options you can do with sliders, if we just remove all this, you can make a switch with a slider. So a switch, let's just say A1. And then let's just make this a point. A11. So a switch is basically something that has two states on and off. In this case, we'll call them 0 and 1, and we'll make the step 1. What this allows you to do is it means that it has two states, nothing in between, and it just flip-flops flip -flops back and forth. You're going to see some uses for this after. But if you want something in only one of two states, that's something you can do with sliders. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll move on to the next tutorial.